Welcome to this OST2 lecture about performing HMAC and hashing using a TPM. Randomness is important to cryptography because computers are really good at producing the same output when you provide them the same input. And for cryptography, it is important to have guaranteed difference in our keys in the output of the cryptographic operations. For this, we have some source of randomness and a cryptographic algorithm that is usually an implementation of different mathematical operations. We have great examples what happens when our source of randomness fails or if we fail to use the source of randomness to generate new, fresh values for our operations. For example, we have the situation with the Debian and Ubuntu flavors of Linux, where a small change in the OpenSSL package for Debian and Ubuntu that was on a redundancy code impacted the randomness of the number generator. By lowering the entropy and how different the numbers are, this provided attack surface for different attacks on SSH keys, VPN keys, DNSSEC, and so on. The TPMC for our endorsement hierarchy, endorsement keys, and other primary keys can also be used for random number generation. There is a TPM2 tool with the nice name TPM2 Get Random that can provide almost unlimited amount of random numbers. Of course, there is a catch. At once, the TPM can provide only as much as the largest supported hash digest. Back in the day, this was 32 bytes because of SHA-256. Nowadays, we have TPMs that support up to SHA-512, so we get 64 bytes at once. And we can make multiple calls to the TPM's uh, random number generator and get as many bytes as we need. The tool has a fairly standard set of options, by using dash O, we can have the output stored in a file instead of going to the standard output. By using double dash and hex, we can have it in a hex format. And something special about this tool is the presence of a dash F for forcing to overwrite safety checks. Essentially, you would not receive any random bytes if they're not the exact amount requested. This is very rare, it would show some kind of a malfunction or you've tried to exceed the supported hash digest size. Let's say you want to generate 80 bytes and the TPM can provide only 64 at once. We have the definition on the slide, I'll just read it out. One-way computation of any size of data to a fixed size result. This is particularly useful for security purposes when we want to obfuscate a secret or a text, usually a password. This is also available on Linux system using the shadow file in the etc folder. Because the hashing is so useful, you probably already have heard about algorithms such as MD5, SHA-1. Unfortunately, both of these algorithms are not good for security purposes nowadays, and we often use SHA-256 and the recommendation is to use the newer versions. The good thing is that the TPM supports these hash versions and you would still need to check your specific TPM model and TPM firmware. Because TPMs have a minimum set of functionalities like the SHA-256, but everything else is more or less optional. And although the industry has moved in that direction and now it's a de facto standard, to have SHA-512, depending when your machine was built or when the server was built, it is always best to check what is really actually supported by the TPM that you're currently using. To perform hashing using a TPM, we have a, another TPM tool with nice name, TPM2Hash. Similar to other tools, as the last argument, it takes a file name, otherwise it would read the data straight from the standard input. Here we are required to specify a hashing algorithm using the dash G option. We also use this option when generating keys 
and you can check the supported algorithms by the TPM2 tools, how the different abbreviations and names translate. Usually it's a one-to-one -one mapping. And we have our standard dash dash hex and dash o options that we are very familiar by now. Last but definitely not least is the HMAC operation. It provides us the benefit of verifying the data integrity and the origin of the message at the same time. And we can just use a shared secret between the two hosts or the entities that need to communicate securely. One specific of the HMAC is that by design, the message used in the operation is not encrypted. So we would need to have a mean to do that, to guarantee also no one else can intercept our message. To perform HMAC, we need a TPM key of keyed hash type. Otherwise, the TPM2 HMAC tool would complain and the HMAC operation would not complete. The only mandatory argument here is the actual input data. This could come from file or the standard input can be used. The hashing algorithm by default is SHA-256 and this is good enough. You can always opt out, opt in for a stronger hash algorithm, which would result in a stronger HMAC. We have OTP generation in our exercises. And while this is good for training, I wanted to present to you how it would look in practice. In reality, we need a shared key, but by design, TPM keys cannot be shared with other entities. Of course, there is a way to have a key that can be shared between TPMs. This is why we had the fixed TPM attribute that can be set or unset. There's also a possibility to duplicate keys. But if you want to share a key with another host or another entity device that does not have a TPM, then you need the actual key in plain. Okay, TPM cannot just use that. So we need to import that key inside the TPM. This operation is explained in our advanced TPM course. For completeness, here I have outlined the flow of practical generation of OTA, of a one-time password using TPM. What I would recommend is to generate random data for a symmetric key and then import this key into the TPM on the other host securely share the random data. At this stage, the secret is exchanged and what we need is just a counter. The counter can be a file, can be an actual digit with ASCII representation. It's up to you and the implementation. Once we have imported the TPM key and shared securely the symmetric key data, we just need to remember to increment the counter every time we need to make a challenge and a verification. As long as a counter matches on both sides of the host, the generated HMAC should be the same. In typical implementations, because of a user error or system error, the counter could get ahead. What we see is that the two hosts perform multiple HMAC computations with the last known counter value plus minus five ahead. So let's say we have a counter of five, the HMAC on the server side will try the HMAC computation with the counter being six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Once a matching value is found with the other host, this counter will be taken as the current one. So it could be that either attempts failed or one of the hosts for various reasons went ahead, but the previous values of the counter are no longer valid and the counter would only move up. I hope this example of practical one-time password generation was useful. Please bear in mind that this is not time-based one-time password generation. This is HMAC-based or briefly said HOTP.